I think the most important issue that we have to deal with at the moment is the rollout of the 5G and IoT surveillance system which is coming online very, very rapidly in all of our communities. 5G is being brought to the world under the guise of rapid communication, but what it really is, the main function of the 5G system is as a weapons and surveillance system. This is military grade technology that has been trialed and tested very, very often in wartime situations for the last 10 to 15 years. The rollout of this technology will be accompanied by the rollout of smart cities and mass surveillance systems to go with them along with a social crediting system and virtual fences and reward points and the loss of points for good or bad behavior dependent upon what people are doing with their time depending on whether they're obeying the government rules or whether they're not and also dependent upon what they're doing online what apps they're using where they're using these apps what they're doing with these apps what they're watching on youtube what they're posting on facebook what they're using social media for all of this stuff will either accredit or detract points according to people's behavior and all of this will be determined by algorithms. And this is what the IoT is. It isn't a system that is creating convenience for people. It's a system of complete blanket surveillance on every conceivable level that is possible. But the other very dangerous thing about this system is that, as I said, it's also a weapons system. 5G is the carrier way for any type of electromagnetic warfare you can think of, be it microwave cannons, be it mind control, be it inducing cancer in people, be it inducing Alzheimer's, be it inducing sickness or well-being in targeted areas of population. All of this is possible with the 5G system and all of this creates a great concern for what the politicians may have in mind for the populations who are going to be subject to these type of frequencies and this type of system. Now what they're doing with this 5G system folks, with these, all these poles they're rolling out and all of these LED lampposts and all of these things they're rolling out is they're actually rolling out prison fences around our communities. Electromagnetic prison fences that people will trigger them if they're crossed simply by the mobile phone that they're carrying, the smartphone and what apps they're using because it'll be the phone that is awarded point scores. We've already seen this happening in Apple phones. Last year this started happening. Apple made an announcement they were going to start awarding people's devices point scores. And I said to you, where do you think this is going to go, folks? You think it's the device that's going to be barred from going places? No, it's going to be the user of the device that the points apply to. And this is what they're rolling out now. And some questions I get in regard to this as well are that, well, if the 5G frequency is so dangerous, why would the politicians be putting it in place? Because aren't they going to be subject to these frequencies as well? Well, yes and no, folks, because all of these 5G poles actually carry a very short distance. The millimeter wave doesn't travel very far. It's a very direct wave, and it's such a short bandwidth of one millimeter that it can't travel very far. So this is why they're putting in posts every 400 meters or so to carry the signal. But the thing is, you know, when looking at all of this and seeing all of this coming down the pike and realizing this is where they're leading us, it becomes very, very apparent that two things that are integral for this system to come online, the whole IoT ultra surveillance smart system they want to roll out, two things that are integral are the 5G carrier wave because they're going to need that type of bandwidth. And not only bandwidth, but they're also going to want that type of control, the type of weapon system that 5G is. So that is one thing that is absolutely integral for this to work for them. And smartphones and smart devices. It is imperative that people carry around smart devices for the system to work, for the whole IoT or smart grid or social crediting system to work at all. People have to have smart devices. Because without the smart devices, they can't be tracked and they can't be identified. And neither can their activities online be tracked and identified without smart devices. Well, not as easily anyway. You know, as I mentioned to you, I think it was last week, your cell phone actually tracks you in so many ways. It isn't just a GPS. It isn't just monitoring your conversations. It also contains a barometer so it can measure air pressure. So it knows when you get in and out of a vehicle. It knows when you go up and down stairs. It knows when there are other people in the room. It knows what stores you're going into. It knows what you're doing in every moment of the day. They send out signals about every 15 seconds or once or twice a minute or something anyway. 
just as a GPS tracking locator. And if your smartphone knows the starting point of your journey and the end point of your journey, it can tell exactly where you went on your journey, how many times you stopped, where you got out of your car, what shops you went into, who you spoke to, what you buy, everything. And all of this data is collected and correlated for later examination if needed. And when would that need arise? Well, that need may arise as soon as someone pulls you over and wants to see your car license or whatever. Soon you won't be giving them your license. Soon a cop will pull you over and ask to see your smartphone. And that is the sort of mass surveillance society that people are moving into and they don't seem to realise that it's happening. But soon all of people's data and their entire life will be instantly accessible to anybody who wants to have a look at it. And if they didn't have these smart devices and weren't carrying them around with them, all their information certainly wouldn't be stored in one place on the cloud and be easily accessible to anybody who wished to stop them and look at their papers, in inverted commas. Only these will no longer be papers, these will be virtual papers. And what these papers will contain will be not just your ID, but a complete log of every activity you have performed in the last seven years. At least the last seven years, anyway, possibly even longer. And of course, depending on how old you are and how long you've had the device. And what these devices are, essentially, it's like everybody is carrying around their own ankle bracelet within the smart prison. Actually, if you don't want to carry a device, you can actually buy your own bracelet and wear a bracelet. Of course, they make you pay for your bracelet. But really, that's what it is. It's a surveillance tracking system you can wear on your wrist or on your ankle. And it's simply a surveillance bracelet. It's a surveillance tracking mechanism. That's what all of this is, ladies and gentlemen. And think about it. It's the smart system. And of course, you will eventually be issued with an ID for the IoT. And it'll be interesting to see the way they present these things. No doubt it will be a card. It'll be interesting to see the way they put the wording, whether it will be shown on the card as the IoT ID or whether it will simply have a big ID with IoT after it and tell you what they really think of you. But it's interesting, you know, when you look at it, the smart system and then you get the idiot card to access the smart system because, of course, you're just an idiot for going along with this whole idea to begin with. And they always have love to tell us what they're doing and put it right in our face. You know, it really is interesting how far they can put it in people's face and people still don't seem to notice it. You know, a lot of people just can't believe this sort of reality would be possible. But this is indeed where it's going, ladies and gentlemen, and it's very obvious that this is where it's going. They're actually telling us this is where it's going themselves now. There's been people like me telling you this for years, but now the powers that believe they be are telling you themselves that this is where it's going. The question is, is it inevitable? Do we need to roll into this smart grid? And that is will depend upon the people themselves because it depends on whether people choose to participate and that's the question people need to ask themselves because as i said this can't work if people put down their smartphones it can't work if we stand up against 5g and the iot even if they want to roll out the iot if we don't shop at those stores to begin with well, they're not going to really work, are they? They're not going to be able to roll it out everywhere else because we'll just stop shopping at these places. The decision is with us, and it's always been with us. This is why I've always said mass arrests and things aren't going to work. I mean, as much as I'd love to see all the politicians arrested, and hey, look, I'm all for it. If, if there's a way that we could do that, you know, if there's a way to infiltrate the system and take action from within, create a political party, undermine the system in that way, if there's something we could do and arrest all these criminals and hold them responsible and accountable for their actions, I'm all for it and I support it completely. The question is, where can we do that? How can we do that? Because all the judges are compromised, the entire legal system is compromised. And even if we do that, which has been my argument from the beginning, even if we do arrest everybody and put them all in jail, well, what do we do then? Because if we haven't changed our moral compass, and we continue to believe that that's all it's going to take is just arresting the offending politicians and putting them somewhere dark for a while, well, we've already lost because that's not going to change anything. You know, it isn't even the politicians that are propelling this IoT, this Internet of Things. It's gotten to the point now where we are propelling it ourselves via our participation in this smart technology. Our want for all this convenience, our want for all these personal assistance and social media connections and all the stuff we do our want for everything to be instantaneously at our fingertips rather than having to go through life and actually learn any lessons along the way 
that's what's propelling this more than anything. So, as I said, folks, even if we do arrest all the offending politicians at the moment, which I'm all for if we could do it and there was a way to actually see it through, it's not going to work if we just put more people in place and haven't changed our moral compass and continue to support this smart grid. Because the smart grid itself is the problem. You know, it doesn't matter what sort of people you have in a situation of government. If we've still got this whole mass surveillance system over the top of us, which is all being run by AI, then how's it going to work anyway? It's not going to work no matter who's there if we allow this whole AI smart grid to come online. Because once the AI controls it, as I said, folks, it's a weapon system. And we're handing over lethal autonomy to an artificial intelligence which is going to judge people by their social credit points. And that doesn't seem like a very smart thing to do under any type of circumstance. So then you've got to get back to the question, well, who's really in charge here? Who's really running this whole show? Because even the politicians are going to end up falling to the whim of this system. It'll end up controlling everybody in every aspect of human life. So who benefits from this? Because there's no one in the human race that seems to benefit from it. I mean, they may to a certain degree until it gets to a certain point. But once it gets to a certain point and becomes fully autonomic on its own, then everybody is going to be held under the same yoke. Eventually, rich or poor, government or non-government, worker or ruler, everyone will be subject to the same AI social crediting system. And once it's all up and running... The entire human experience will be run as a tightly knit and efficient machine. Those who do not serve the system will be discarded. This could easily be done through many of the things that I've outlined in the earlier part of the show. You know, the AI could just determine that this section of the population is not useful and therefore they should be subject to some sort of frequency which is going to make them all sick and die. It could be easily done. 